basically today we're going to speak about one specific data grid technologies from J from Red Hat um, called JBoss Data Grids or JD JDG. Um, today we're going to give you a brief overview of how to install, configure, and develop um, relatively simple uh, data grid uh, applications um, using uh, Red Hat JBoss data grids. Um, so to give you a brief overview of what we'll be covering today, um, first of all, um, like anything uh, we do with the development and setup, we will be first going through the installation, um, how to install uh, JBoss data grids uh, technology. Um, following that, I will give you a brief overview of what one different uh, directories and configuration files within JBoss data grids um, and what we need to configure to get us up and running um, to develop a, <clears throat> a sample application um, or data grid based application um, depend, depending on one's needs. Um, after that we will be then going into the two discuss uh, the usage modes um, which which describe how one interacts with um, JBoss data grids. Uh, basically, it will be either an architecture style of either remote client server or library mode. Um, from that, we'll then go into describing uh, various different clustering modes, um, which our application, server application or data grid application will use and provide a brief outline of uh, J groups and how it interacts and interoperates with uh, JBoss data grids. Um, lastly, um, we will be then going to briefly describe cache stores and their usage um, uh, in the data grid um, and the different types of cache store one can use. And we'll finally be ending the demo, finally ending the actual um, overview uh, with a brief demo of a sample hot rod client server application which I have developed um, just to give you an overview um, of basically what is actually involved and what steps you need to do to actually configure a, a basic uh, JDG uh, client server uh, data grid application. So to get started um, <coughs> Installation is relatively straightforward. Um, we need to firstly go to uh, JBoss, uh, the Red Hat uh, website, and download, log in on your support account, and scroll, scroll to your data grids. Um, click on the data grid option, and in this particular uh, webinar, we're going to be using the latest. Uh, Red Hat JDG um, technology, uh, which is version 6.2. Um, in my particular case, I would suggest for people to download the JBoss Data Grid Server 6.2, um, the server itself, the Quick Start Guides, and the Maven repository. Um, so the Quick Starts contain actually a number of different um, demo applications. Um, demo data grid applications which um, are built um, using Maven which um, illustrate the various different uh, features available within uh, JBoss data grids. <coughs> so I have previously downloaded a version of JBoss data grids and within here I will show you I have renamed <clears throat> so when you download it, you will get these three zips here. This is for the Quick Start Guide, the Maven repository, which will contain our Maven artifacts to build a data grid project, our server, just actual uh, <clears throat> server instance, uh, which you're reconfiguring. So basically when you download this, you'll extract it. In my particular case, I have renamed it as Server 1. You'll see why um, later on when we go to run the demo. So, within when you unzip um, 
server zip file. Um, there are a number of two different modes which you can run the application in. You can either run in standalone, standalone mode or clustered mode. So in standalone mode you run um, your data grid application as a single node. Um, so your data grid only consists of one, one single node and clustered is the opposite where by basically your data grid will consist of multiple um, different multiple different nodes uh, distributed um, on different machines. Um, <clears throat> so to actually start up either of these two particular either standalone or cluster we use these particular um, startup scripts. Now I'm briefly going to give you an overview of the configuration files. So when you run standalone or clustered, you uh, you either by default, if you run standalone, you will be given um, if we run with this particular uh, data grid configuration file, standalone.xml. Um, so if we quickly go up and have a look, we'll just reference the important parts which are relevant here. So within our standalone instance, we can see here we have our different clients. So within JBoss data grids, we can interact with, <coughs> as stated before, with a we can run in either client server mode or library mode. So in client server mode, we interact remotely by client using one of three. Uh, different protocols, either hot rod, memcached, or rest. And JBoss uh, allows us to interact using uh, these hot rod connectors, using a hot rod connector, a memcached connector, or rest connector. Um, so in our particular case, we are looking at a hot rod connector. You can see here there's a number of different attributes which we need to be concerned about, particularly the socket binding hot rod. We scroll down to view this where it's running. We can see that by default it's running on a port 11.222. Furthermore we have a number of different caches here which we can see here are just local caches that run just locally in a single node which are defined out of the box for us to for us to use um, if we're running in standalone mode. Alternatively, alternatively um, we can start up um, our instances um, using in a cluster. And for that, out of the box, you're given um, a cluster.xml file, which you need to configure. Um, if you were to examine the difference between these two um, particular <clears throat> uh, configuration files um, basically clustering the XML contains JBot, contains J groups configuration um, which allows for each which we can see briefly here which out of the box uses UDP uh, protocol to allow nodes in the cluster to communicate with each other. Furthermore Another notable difference is that within here, out of the box, there's, there is defined a number of distribution caches, which was one of the clustering modes you can use in JBoss data grids. We will come back to this specific configuration when we come to running our application and setting up our demo uh, to explain the ins, the minor details of how to go about configuring uh, New cache, new cache instances, and the different types of um, clustering caches you, you wish you wish to have. <clears throat> so, as I stated previously in my last slide, and I was walking through the, the relevant, important directories to to look at. You're looking at J JBoss data grids out of the box. 
either run it in clustered or standalone um, mode. I'm now going to give you a quick overview of basically what I have set up on my machine to uh, create uh, basically a, s a simple um, hot rod remote client server and data grid application. So <clears throat> in order, if you look, firstly we need to get um, see, a JDK installed. Um, which with JBoss data grids is for two um, actual uh, JDK types, either Open JDK from Red Hat uh, version 1.6 or Oracle's 1.6 or greater. On my particular machine, I have installed 1745. Just to quickly check, and you need to have installed also Maven. If you wish to use Maven to automate um, the building uh, and execution of your um, application, um, so in terms of Maven version, you should be using ver version 3.1.1 or later, um, 3.0 or later. In this case, I've got 3.1.1, and I've got Oracle's <coughs> um, JDK 1.7.45. So we're okay on that front. Additionally, in my case. You can use whatever ID <coughs> is preferable, um, but in my particular case, I, I like Eclipse, and uh, I'm going to use it in this particular this particular case. Um, so you should download uh, Maven if you don't have already version 3.0 or greater. Um, Eclipse IDE standard edition or JE version and the relevant JDK 1.6 or greater, either on Oracle or OpenJDK. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to speak briefly about just uh, the difference, um, basically cache types or cache runtime uh, objects which uh, JBoss Data Grid uh, uses and allows us to interact with our actual cache types, whatever they may be. So on the top level, I'm just going to use, let's take my cluster uh, the XML file as an example. You can see here that we have a, a cache container defined. <coughs> you can have multiple different cache containers defined, but in our particular case, we have a cache container which basically provides a runtime for our um, cache instances. Um, so we need to define, before we use any caches, we need to have a cache container defined out of the box. Um, in this particular case, we have named ours cluster cache. We have specified that this will be the default cache. Statistics true parameter basically says um, that we will enable JMX uh, statistics um, to be logged um, and be enabled. Um, so we can see what's happening um, at an MB level um, at, uh, for our various different uh, caches. In this particular case, we have also here we've defined the transport executor. Um, we've defined here a name Infinite Transport, which is, if we are to look at that briefly, we have basically it's a thread pool um, which will be used by our specific uh, cache container. And here we have a lock timeout of 60 seconds. <coughs> so also within here, if we have to go back to our slides, we have a cache manager. So when we actually deploy and run our actual application, um, we need a means to interact um, with our various different cache instances. And depending on the type of data grid application, whether you have a remote client server or library, uh, library based application, then you will use one or two different types of cache manager uh, to interact with your specific cache instances. Uh, 
uh, running within your cache container. So if you're using library modes, um, if your application um, is running in library mode, which we will discuss briefly in more detail, you will need um, to use an embedded uh, cache manager instance. And in the case of your application is a remote client server application, your client uh, instance will use a remote cache manager uh, instance to interact and retrieve um, your cache manager to retrieve and interact with your actual cache itself. Um, so speaking of uh, the different nodes <coughs> um, which we can interact and use our JBoss data grid, um, we can either have a client server type application, and as specified previously, we can either basically your server will run in one particular VM or multiple different VMs. Your data grid application will run in multiple different VMs and your client will run in a different VM and it will use one of the three uh, different protocols supported by JDG 6.2 to interact with your uh, server application. So we have either using the hot rod protocol, um, memcached or rest. Um, now in library mode um, or in embedded in embe embedded mode um, basically your server and your actual code your application accessing uh, the cache is run in the same virtual mach machine so an example of that would be whereby you may have a your application server um, your, your file or say for example a Tomcat um, server um, whereby you have your data grid uh, application deployed um, to, to the Tomcat server itself. You will need to specify um, if it run in the same um, mode as your um, if you run the same virtual machine as your application server, which has been deployed to. Um, there's two different types of configurations which we can use uh, to configure our caches and the different types of caches we, we wish to use. You can use, either do it programmatically um, via code or declaratively um, using the XML configuration uh, file. Um, so as we can see, in this particular case here in our cluster XML file we use a declarative we're saying that we wish to use a distributed cache with this particular names transport mode the number of owners etc we could do the same programmatically if we wish to <clears throat> furthermore depending on the type of mode you're using the syntax will vary um, when you uh, specify uh, your cache configuration and types in your cluster.xml file or standalone.xml file. Um, so that's just something that you should be aware of. Um, so you can see here, both of these are doing the same, doing the same thing. We're creating a new uh, distributed uh, cache depending on what mode we wish to use, we'll specify different syntax um, within our cluster.xml file. Okay, so you say there's two different nodes um, which uh, JBoss data grids uh, uses. It can either be, we can either have our standalone, um, standalone node in our data grid, it's local, it's a local uh, cache, or we can have a clustered data grid consisting of multiple different nodes. Um, within clustering mode, um, <coughs> we, there's three different types of clustering cache we can have. We can have a distributed replication and invalidation. With, distributed, with a distributed cache type, um, we basically specify a subset of actual nodes to 
where entries will be uh, distributed to or shared, shared with in our cache. In replication mode, each cache entry is replicated or copied to each node in our cluster. And in validation mode, we don't actually share any data. But what it does is that we signal to remote cache to remove individual entries um, from those uh, from remote nodes. Um, we're going to make a quick point here in terms of actually just one second. Great. Okay, so <clears throat> to follow up, we have now JBoss um, data grids and J groups. So how does how do all the nodes communicate with each other, message and signal to each other? Um, to store and share data and to be aware of who's what nodes are in the cluster um, how how are messages transported reliably between the cluster nodes um, in our data grid um, we use <coughs> out of the box here JBoss data grid uses J groups for that uh, particular use the framework which consists of multiple different um, <coughs> protocols for discovering and messaging uh, our nodes within our cluster. Um, we will so just to briefly show you an example. For example here within our cluster.xml file we can see here we have <coughs> we have the subsystem here's the J group subsystem. Um, which out of the box uses UDP and there's multiple different configuration here's a TCP configuration if we wish to use TCP but in our case <coughs> on that particular demo we will be using UDP since we have multiple different nodes on who can communicate with each other um, but in the same network so it's uh, stick to a simplistic um, set up in this particular case. So we're now going to briefly discuss and touch on um, cache stores, uh, what they are, what different types they're going to have, when you would use them, etc. Um, so basically cache store is a persistent storage uh, which <coughs> is whereby we would define um, persistent store uh, for us to use. Um, so sometimes <coughs> if we uh, want to take our cache offline for example and we want to ensure that the data in our cache is still there when we start up we can define a, a cache store which will persist our data um, to um, predominantly ID either usually disk or to um, the JDBC uh, cache store. So yeah, the two particular types we predominantly would use would be we can define either a file-based cache store to persist our cache entries, or to or a JDBC cache store is a whereby we define um, what database we wish to persist our cache entries to for a particular cache. Um, when when data is written to um, a cache, cache store, there's two modes in which, which that can happen. Um, it will be right through or right behind. But right through, um, cache entries will be updated at the same time um, or synchronously. Um, it will be written at the same time as to the as our JDB to say for example we had a file based cache store so all of our nodes will all the cache entry will be cache entries will be updated at the same time as our file file store uh, is updated uh, with right behind it basically writes are done to the cache store um, asynchronously so there's a separate thread which will run in the background which will periodically uh, update um, the actual uh, cache store 
instance. Uh, out of the box, uh, write true if you have configured a file a file or JDBC uh, cache store. Um, write true is the default, um, so you no need to specify. Um, if you wish to just re use write true <coughs> um, <coughs> mode or writing of entries to the persistent cache, then you, you don't need to specify anything, uh, any extra configuration. Um, whereas if you want to use write behind, you do need to specify um, the actual uh, that you wish to use write behind. Um, with your particular cache store in your, and here I provide a brief <coughs> snippet of an XML uh, or file file by cache store <coughs> whereby we write entries to C slash file store switch passivation of files who won't share uh, this particular uh, cache store with other nodes in our cluster and we have configured right behind um, to write entries to our particular cache store so <clears throat> I'm now going to, um, lastly, uh, discuss, um, give you a brief um, overview of a demo application, for example, JBoss Data Grid application um, that I developed here, and what I need to do, how I configure it, and give you a brief, brief demo of the, of the application, and Furthermore, just give you a brief walkthrough of the different uh, API I used um, to configure um, my particular application. So, in my particular case, uh, the application itself it is um, a basic client <coughs> cinema directory uh, uh, data grid application running. Um, in remote client server mode um, and because we're using remote client server mode as specified previously we will be using three one of the three supported protocols in my case I will be using the hot rod protocol to interact with my uh, server application um, so I will have <coughs> a hot rod server configured and the hot rod client which you can currently see the code for. First I'll give you a brief overview of the server application and how I configured um, JBoss DataGrid to interact uh, with my hot rod server DataGrid application and uh, we'll go from there. So basically <coughs> within here going to go into where I have I. So within my data grid I have three particular um, three particular nodes um, which all run on the same host on my local host. <coughs> um, as mentioned earlier these each of these three copies are renamed of my particular of JDB data grid server so basically I have unzipped them and renamed <coughs> made a copy of three three particular instances and configured each one in particular. Since I'm going to be using um, a clustered application um, with three nodes, I'm going to <coughs> configure each each cluster.xml file. In my case, I have provided my own custom cluster.xml file, which is just modified in minor detail from um, the cluster.xml out of the box um, to, allow, allow to define my own particular cache. So, <coughs> as we can see here, I'm just going to go through the relevant parts of the configuration of how I set up my particular cache. So, as, can, as, as discussed easier, Earlier, we have here a binding here stating that we wish our cache container to use hot rod, which is bound to the local host on port 1122, and in this case, the port 
port offset or binding is going to be zero. Um, out of the box, you get these here. So I have configured my cache container name to be the cluster cache. It's the default cache. It's going to be my transport executor type, which we went through previously. And now I define a new distributed uh, cache. So in order to do that, names, I've given it a name. So in order to, def to define a distribute cache, you specify um, distribute cache name, in my case directory distribute cache. The mode attribute specifies the <coughs> type of communication which will uh, take place between uh, nodes in our data grid. In our case it will be synchronous. Um, so it will be blocking while um, messages are being sent between sender and receivers. Um, in our case, we wish we have three um, particular nodes in our data grid, and we wish to make uh, two copies available on our data grid. So if one of them goes down, then <coughs> we, there will be another copy available at all times. Um, simply our remote remote timeout, so how our clients connecting to to our server will have a timeout of 30 seconds. The star parameter specifies whether our this particular cache uh, distributed cache will be started at server startup time or at um, request when the cache instance is requested by the client. In our case we want to start up when the server is starting. Um, <coughs> Here we have our lock and isolation level, so transaction, iso transaction isolation level, set to recommitted. This is the timeout which we can acquire a particular lock. Uh, we set lock stripping to false. Additionally, we have for the configuration here, so we have put an eviction of max eviction uh, entry so that there is only uh, 20, maximum 20 entries in our cache. This is primarily used for memory management, um, whereby we specify an eviction strategy. There's multiple different ones uh, we can use, um, but in this particular case, I'm going to go use least, least recently used uh, with uh, max entries in our cache of 20, 20 particular entries, and we are not going to specify this that this the transactionality is going to be none. So our sample application is going to interact with these particular uh, instances. This particular cache instance, this distributed cache instance. Um, I defined here briefly just to show you how you would use one of the two other modes, clustering modes you can use to define your cluster cache is either replication, replicated cache and an invalidation cache. So we won't be di interacting directly with these particular caches uh, on the server, um, but just solely here for illustration purposes to show you how you, how you would uh, define a rep replicated cache and invalidation cache uh, on our server. So I'm just going to go as stated previously, we have three different nodes on this, which are just copies of our JBoss data grid uh, application. So each of these are very much the same. Our cluster2.xml file, which is our own customized uh, file. This is the exact same as clustered one.xml that we were just discussing previously. The only difference here is that we, since we're running all of these instances on my local host on my one machine, we wish to set the port, port binding offset to uh, 100 uh, from the previous cluster one. And to our last instance server three is the exact same. No difference here. 
say you don't only different same cache con cache configuration details. We just specify um, port binding of two hundred. So now that we have discussed discussed our server hot rod server applicate data grid application on three particular nodes, let me show you. I'm going to quickly start up and show you the application um, and then I'll briefly end by discussing the client. So in this particular case we can see here this is our server going to the bin directory over first instance named server one. We're going to start it up using the clustered uh, dot bat file because we're on Windows. Uh, we're going to use cluster.1.xml file as we previously just walked through and we want to uniquely identify this particular node, differentiate it uh, from all other nodes in the cluster so we need to specify uh, the property uh, jboss node.name to each server one. So I'm just now going to start up each particular node instance. So as you can see here, here's information regarding our J groups view and the members within the cluster. We have three members, server one, three and two in our cluster. So now we have our hot rod server up and running. I'm now going to quickly discuss briefly, I think we're running out of time. <laughs> Uh, client application. So, how did I set this particular, particular client, hot rod client server application up? Um, <clears throat> primarily, I used Maven to deploy, um, to set up, uh, to build and run my application. So, I downloaded Maven. So when you download Maven, you should have a settings.xml file. In my particular case, what I did is I made a copy. If you go and you download the quick start guide from JBoss, there is examples. It's an example of a Maven repository, which you can use for example settings.xml. So basically what you do is copy, open that up and copy that to <coughs> or copy that configuration into your own particular Maven repository location. In my case it's my home directory dot n2 so Windows and once you copy it across you change you change to where actual Maven repository is stored where you have all the, the artifacts or JAR files required to build your project, your data grid project. So in my case this is where they are located. You see here so yeah you can see there's my repository and location so I just specified that particularly here and I made this profile to be active. So, <coughs> moving on. So, in my particular application, I created a, I created a Maven project within Eclipse. I created my own palm.xml file, whereby within what I did here, is yes, there's multiple ways of creating a client application but in my particular case I used the quick start guide and one of the sample applications within here comes with each each data grid application 
so you can see that quick start here come with a number of samples so within the project <coughs> you need to define within maven your own palm.xml file which will define where your the main class of your actual project the different dependencies and artifacts that um, your actual database application relies on I'll quickly briefly show you mine the handiest thing so I used one of them as a template and made some changes so <coughs> in my particular case my hot rod my main class that I'm going to run it's called cinema directory and here's all the, the various different dependencies and specify where the jar project for your, your data project will be built etc so <coughs> basically my application here show it I've got defined this particular directory I just create a source directory with a package name main Java I defined here my two classes and my pom.xml file and ran maven once I had done that you run the maven map maven clean package to build your actual application and this is the first time for your project to group <coughs> take take quite a while to run um, since there's a number of different um, artifacts it needs to pull in um, if you don't wish to use maven and um, there is an alternative which you can use what you could use is within your jboss data grid there's a client directory client hot rod java which contains all the libraries you need to build your client application so what you could do is create a new project in Eclipse and <coughs> specify each of these on a build path and class path um, to allow your application to deploy and run so you don't necessarily you don't need to use maven in my particular instance I find it quite useful to automate the, the build and deployment of my application so hence, hence I, I use the so in my particular case you can see here using the Maven plugin exact Java we run it <coughs> the data grid is up and running from Trino data cinema data grid so my data grid stores a, is a distributed cache um, which is storing um, a list of cinemas and each particular cinema contains a list of shows associated with that cinema so this application allows us to add add a, add a new cinema location, add a show to an existing uh, cinema, remove a show from the cinema or print all cinemas and shows or just simply quit the application so in our case let's just for example in just our case let's, let's add new cinema so new cinema We can see our new cinema has been added. Now you want to, you want to add in, type in AS to add a new show to this new cinema. Let's put in a new show. The Wolf of Wall Street 2, for example. <laughs> Perhaps next year. Now we quit. Now he's going to print out the best PR to print out the list. And as we can see, each of these nodes you can see our new new cinema has been added along with our the actual show so if you wanted to actually prove as your data grid so basically if you take down some of these nodes any one of these nodes there should be your cache should be still available on one particular instance you want two copies to be still available as you can see still is 
take it down, take down server two. See, it's still available on server three. So <clears throat> all is working well on our actual application. So lastly, I'm just going to quickly, briefly overview the actual client application. Um, <clears throat> which is very simple. Um, so as specified earlier, we are using here we are creating a simple hot rod <coughs> client uh, Java application to interact with our distributed cache uh, running on each of the our tree server nodes. So we're interacting with this particular cache here. So to start off with we just define a number of prompts which allows us to interact with the actual application. We specify here our key name which would be in this simple application we're just going to use the cache name as the key name to reference uh, cinema, cinema location and shows. Um, so when that application starts off, we've got a number of different actions here which we can define. So if you press AC, you call the meta at, at cinema, AS, at show, etc, etc. So I'm just going to go through the main parts of this, um, the important parts in terms of what we need in clients. So as we discussed earlier, um, we need a cache manager to interact with our actual client application. Um, in our case, because we're in remote client server mode, we will define, we're going to use remote cache manager type, uh, instantiate an instance of this um, to interact with our server. So we define properties file, we list the servers. Here's the list of servers which our hot rod server is running on. By that list, create a new instance of the remote cache manager with our with our where our servers where our cache <coughs> instance is located, which is on each of these three servers. Now use the cache manager to we call the get cache method to actually get the cache. And as you can see this matches <coughs> our name here of our distributed cache deployed in each of the tree servers. Um, when we first starts up, we define a list just to store locally a uh, list of cinemas. We add in by default three shows to this particular cinema location. And here, we actually, this is the part where we actually specify, say, okay, we'd like to put at the key value cinema key, which is find the same as our cache with our list of cinemas. So when <coughs> the application starts up, it'll automatically add in um, a cinema entry, entry with these three particular shows and put that into our distributed cache. I'll just briefly discuss this particular one more method. Most of these methods follow the same logic in terms of um, retrieving um, objects from our cache and how to put new objects into our cache. So the add cinema type here, we get the, we say to the user, add in a new entry, the cinema you want to add, and we put it into our cache at this line here. You see here the prints the same, add the show method, we enter the cinema name of an existing cinema name, we do a lockup of that cinema name in the cache, we get it, and we add in a new cinema name 
so <coughs> now I've finished um, the webinar and um, some useful slides which I think you should have a look at if you wish to find out more um, on JBoss data grids um, on the Red Hat site you can download the JBoss data grid software and documentation set and um, here is our um, website ctb 2couk and here's our blog site also which you can find more information on data grids and other middleware uh, related topics.